the grade seven lesson when it's supposed to be the grade nine lesson. So here I am. Um, I'm just going to get everything set up. I see the host is already recording. Thank you so much for covering for me, Janelle, our awesome host. When I phoned her and I told her, listen, something's not right. She said, yeah, you're in the wrong lesson. That's exactly what's the problem. So anyway, we are here. We're good to go. I'm in the grade nine lesson. I have the grade nine PowerPoint open. I'll just change my uh, co.org account into the grade nine one when we get there. For now, welcome. It is the 17th of July and we are doing conditionals in B. So this is going to be puzzle number seven to 13 is what we aim for today. If we do more, that's fine. If we do a bit less, that's also okay. It allows, uh, I have the flexibility to adjust my lesson plans as I need to. Um, so yeah, my name is Mr. Paul de Clerc. If you are new with us, welcome. Um, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, then you can just head down to the video description and you'll find links to register so that you can come and join us in, in class here. Right, so I think we are ready to continue. Perfect, so here's a quote from Mr. Clive Thompson. He is the author of a book titled Coding, The Making of a New Tribe and the Remaking Right, and it says people who know how to code is a, is a catalytic spot. They can make things happen. And I can see that in our daily lives. Just look at the way that we're doing education here. And the reason that we are here and we have the ability to use things like Zoom and PowerPoint and all of that, all of those programs and software that was created with computer programs right, and computer code. So without it, we wouldn't have had the opportunity to remake the way that we're doing education at the moment due to unforeseen circumstances in our world. So I do fully agree with this. The world is being remade as we speak constantly, ever evolving, and we, the ones that are coding, we are going to be the ones to implement these changes, to make these things happen. It might be even somebody else's idea. It doesn't have to even be the coder's idea. But even people with great ideas that don't know how to code is going to have a hard time to implement that. So just think on that for a while. Right. So here are some terms that we need to know. Conditionals, if else logic statements that change the way code is executed. So what that means is if we take just a normal sequence of code, we drop it into an if-else statement, we are going to change the way that it operates and it functions and it's executed. That if-else statement basically tells our code to check for certain conditions before acting in a certain way, either going ahead or not going ahead, okay? Or then doing something completely different, but you'll see that now. The next one is Variables. So variables are placeholders for information that can change. At the moment, you're not seeing them, but you are using them. You just don't know their variables yet. So when I see them, I'll tell you about them, but we're not going to be defining them yet and changing them around and so on. I'll show that to you a bit later. Okay, so as I said, conditionals in B, let's jump to that coding screen. Now I just need to give, uh, ask you to give me a second because this is the grade sevens one, so I just need to quickly sign into the grade nine one. I don't know what I did there, but for some reason, it felt like it was 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, this one. Okay. And we're good to go. Just allow it to load, and we are on track. If else with B, let me just copy this for you into our chat box there and it's done. Awesome. So if while I'm talking through this, oh, something else that I wanted to say, I received an email yesterday from someone and I think now that I see the names, it might've been from this class. If somebody said my, my device died, I couldn't get the homework link, please email it to me. If you send me emails, I really want you to and to connect with me, but just state your name and in what grade you are there. I teach the entire senior phase for coding and you and the grade eights are in a very similar place, but 
it does differ. So sometimes the homework that they get and the homework that you get is different. And between this and the grade seven class and I help with hosting and I do training, I see probably a hundred students name in a day. So it's very difficult for me to place exactly which student belongs to what classroom. Okay, we don't have attendance registers and things like that. So the only way that I can help you is if you give me as much information as possible on the email. So please request homework from me. Please do those things. I could have asked, listen, in what lesson are you? What class are you? But uh, I was in meetings last night until about nine o'clock. And this morning I had to prepare everything that I couldn't prepare last night due to the meeting. So that is a bit my fault, but just to streamline that for the future. Okay. If it was someone from this class. Okay. So what we have here is we are going to collect all of the nectar using as few blocks as possible. So we've done this. I just want to talk through it. Here we have we have our move forward block. And now this move forward block is going to make the beam move forward as it states, right? That's pretty obvious. Now what it is going to do as well is it is going to, or what we have next here, so what the code is going to do is it's going to actually take this conditional block and it's going to tell the bee, right, what you do is you check if you are at a flower or whether you are not at a flower. So you're going to verify if this condition is true or false, whether this condition has been met or not. If this condition is true, if true, yes, you are at the flower, condition has been met, then you do that, you get nectar. But if this is false, so the condition has not been met, then you don't do that, you just skip into the repeat. Okay. So this is actually going to check on every block on this side and on that side. The ones with flowers and the ones without flowers. It's going to perform a check before it decides how to act. Right, so then we can run this. This is that, right? This is easy. I mean, we've seen this a thousand times. This is just to move the bee to where we need to be, okay? And we've just completed an entire lesson on, on loops and nested loops. So this is a loop inside a loop. This loop is doing that and this big loop is doing everything twice. Okay. Right. So I think we can continue. The first lesson is always a bit of a review just to give you time to get into the platform and so on. From now, we're going to explain in more detail and do it together. Just going to share this link. Now I just want to make honey. Some of these clouds might have honeycombs under them. Be sure to check if a honeycomb is hiding behind each cloud. If there is a honeycomb, the bee will only need to make honey once. Okay? And this is pretty straightforward. We're going to move forward like this once. We're going to do that again. Then we're going to check for our honeycomb. If we are there, we are going to make honey. Then we're going to turn left from there to there. Then we're going to repeat everything. Now, if you run it, there you go. You can see that worked, there were no issues. So I just want to replay this. Something that you need to take note of, I just can take that away. You see this pattern changes, right? Sometimes there's one there and nothing here. Sometimes both of them have something. Sometimes it's the other way around. So you can't really trick this to say, write the code without using the conditional. You have to use the conditional. 
because if you tell this to make honey somewhere and there isn't a honeycomb there, then the code will not work. You receive an error here at the top. Okay. So this conditional protects us to say that if there is a honeycomb, we're going to make the honey. If there's nothing, we're just going to carry on moving the way that we have before. Right. Do you understand this one? There you can see there's nothing and we don't receive any errors. Do you understand this one? Just type yes in the chat box if you're happy with this and we can move on. Okay, now I faced with a different situation. Sometimes a cloud covers a flower, sometimes it covers a honeycomb. Use the if else block to collect nectar at flowers and make honey at the honeycomb. Remember, if there is a flower, the bee needs to get nectar once. If there's a honeycomb, the bee only needs to make honey once. Okay, so let's just quickly look practically at what this means. Run it, there is a honeycomb. Run it, there's a flower. Honeycomb flower okay so you can see that's going to change so what do we need to do is we need to move there first of all one two now we know because they tell it to us here at the top and we just saw it by testing it there can be one of only two options either a flower for nectar or a honeycomb for honey but there won't be nothing and there won't be a carrot for making carrot juice right it's going to be either one of those two options. There is no other option that will become available. And if one of those do become, or when one of those do become available, it'll be only one. So we can only have to, or we will only have to repeat that once. Or do that once. So now we use this block. If at the flower, we want you to get the nectar. If you are not at the flower else, we want you to make honey because there are two possible options. There's either a flower or there's a honeycomb. That's it, there's nothing else. So you can use this as a binary question, sort of yes or no. And when it's a yes, you do this. When it's a no, you do that, okay? So else is basically standing for if this condition is not met, then this will happen. Where with the normal if statement, there is no else, so the code is just going to continue to whatever comes next in the sequence. But now we are sell telling it, okay, don't just continue on with the sequence, do this specifically. And there you see we've done it with the honeycomb, it works with the flower. You can even change this around, but then the honeycomb or the make honey needs to be at the top and the flower needs to be at the bottom. So to make sense of this, you just need to read this properly. If add honeycomb, do make honey. So if you are at a honeycomb, make honey. If you are not at a honeycomb, then get nectar. But you need to pay attention to this repeat. It becomes very tricky. It catches people out often. This one only works if there is a second option. And something has to happen with that second option. If the second option is nothing, okay, your else can be moved forward as an example, but think about it here. Let's say there was either a flower or nothing. So now you say, okay, if at flower, we want you to get nectar, okay? But now they tell us here, there's either going to be a flower or nothing. Now this else, it is going to try and execute the else. And if you run this without having something in there, it's going to give you an error. It's going to say, oh, the repeat or if block needs to have other blocks inside it to work, right? So there has to be something else that can happen. In this case, we know it's going to be either a honeycomb or flower, but if it wasn't, let's say it was just a flower or nothing, then you had to put something in there for this to work. You could have put a turn left or a turn right. Obviously, if you put a move forward, it's going to walk into the wall. 
So I just need you to really understand how to use this one because later on, it seems like there are some applications where you would use this one, but it's not the case. When we're looking at while loops and things like that or until loops, right? So these ones, just be careful. It is purely a yes or no answer that this one can answer. So there can be only one of two outcomes for that specific area that you want to use that block in. If there's more than two or there's only one, you're going to have trouble. It's not going to work. Are you all happy with that? Can I continue? Look carefully at the code below. What do you think will happen after you click run? Remember, there will only ever be one honeycomb or one flower behind each cloud. The bee will get nectar at each flower and make honey at each honeycomb. The bee will try to get nectar from both flowers and honeycombs. The bee will try to get honey from both flowers and honeycombs. I don't know. Move forward. If at flower, get nectar, else make honey. So what do you think will happen here? So just drop your answer into the chat box. Okay, so two choices. Let's look. Repeat three times, move forward, that's fine. One, two, three moves, that's cool. If at a flower, get nectar. Okay, so that is correct. If not on a flower, make honey. So this is saying, look carefully, what do you think will happen? There will only ever be one honeycomb or one flower. So what this is telling you is each cloud has only one of two options that can happen. Either a flower or honeycomb. Not a nothing, not, not something else. Just one of those two things. And when it's one of those two things, it's only going to be one of them. So my opinion is the same. It's going to be A. Okay, awesome. What's happening here? You need to continue with us. Oh, did I click on the wrong place? There we go. Okay. So now we're ready. Challenge. There will be either a flower or a honeycomb under each of those clouds. Collect nectar once if there's a flower. Otherwise, make honey once because there is a honeycomb. So we obviously need to move forward and move forward there and there and there. So it's one more. Let's test that. Okay, that works. Now we see, okay, if we're there, we need to either turn and then check or check and then turn. It really doesn't matter. But let's check first. So if we are a flower, we're going to get nectar. If we're on a honeycomb, we want to make honey. And if we're not on a flower, we will be on a honeycomb. That's it. There's no other choice. Then we're going to turn right, not left. And we'll drop this into repeat. Now, how's this possible? We're already using eight blocks. 
One, two. And this is how we're going to use a nested loop to make it shorter. Okay, great. So just to give you an example as well of the power of the loop, right? That's not why I did it. I just wanted to not drag and set stuff. So I just used three move forwards, but we obviously had to get that first move forward into a repeat block. Otherwise we're using more blocks than we are allowed to in order to repeat the entire sequence again. So this becomes easy because we can identify exactly where those if else blocks will need to be placed, right? You can see it on the play area exactly in the maze. Okay, we're going to move twice, then it's there. And that pattern repeats four times. So it's going to be the same each time. This becomes a different story to use that if else block. If the pattern between those things are not so very recognizable. Okay. But in the meantime, are you happy with this? Shall we continue? Collect all of the ne nectar or make all of the honey. You can only collect nectar from flowers and make honey from honeycombs. Check any space to see if there is a flower or honeycomb. There will only ever be one flower or one honeycomb behind each cloud. We cannot see the pattern. But we do know that every single one will have either a honeycomb or a flower. So we know not one of them will be empty. If we are stressing about that, we can just run this and see if it will run. Come on, it's slow now. There you can see each one of the blocks has something. Run it again. It's going to show you each one of the blocks with a different pattern. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to move forward. We're going to check if at that we want you to do this. If there's something else, do that. And we will repeat this. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Okay. So you can see there again that if else only works when every single block has something. If the if is not true, there needs to be an else. If there is no else, there's no action that we can put in there. It doesn't work. Okay. Especially if you're going to put an, ax, uh, an action or a statement like make honey because the program will tell you I cannot make honey from here because there is no honey here. But if you make it move forward, it'll still move forward because it can almost always move forward as long as there's space on the play area, right? So the best place and time to use this if else is when you have two options. And that just gets re reaffirmed the entire time.
Okay, so here you can see we can use it even when we know exactly what is in each spot. So we're still limited to six blocks. And we have another restriction added on us. And that's this one here. There's only one get nectar and only one make honey. So the way to solve this is exactly how we solved the one before. There's absolutely no difference between them. Again, because now they don't telling, they're not telling us yet each one will either have a flower or a honeycomb. We can see it. It's open. So that check we did in the beginning of the previous puzzle, they've already done it for us. Oh, that's the one mistake I often make is to forget that little number there. Are you happy with if, else, and B? I think it's pretty straightforward. It's easy to understand, but it is important that you understand it because I'm hoping from here we're going to move on into conditional repeats and then it's a bit more intense. Okay, cool. I'm going to continue and I think, I think you're ready for it. Those, these bonus levels, I think you've done this one anyway, so let's just move on. Okay, before we do this, I want to see something. Huh. We've just done this. Okay, so code.org yesterday has gone and they've updated the 2020 version again. You can see this one was before the if else with B. Now it's before that one and I, it's just a mess. But this is where we want to be. Yes, we're going to start with conditional repeats. Awesome. So I'm going to show you, we're going to run through this first few right? Because it's, it's very easy stuff. So let's do that. And then I, because I want to really get to one conditional repeat before we have to say goodbye today. Um, this is a while conditional repeat. So uh, we'll, we'll look at that now. Hi, I'm a farmer. I need you help to flatten the field on my farm. So it's ready for planting, move the pile of dirt and use the remove, uh, move to the pile of dirt and use the remove block to remove it. Okay, so we're going to move forward once. Okay, we only have one move forward, so we obviously have to repeat that. Let's do that. We repeat this five times and say one. Uh, I can't really see the blocks. Hey, it's difficult. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's good. And then we're going to remove one because that's what there's only one pile. We're going to remove it. I'm trying to move too many times, it seems. Let's see if we do this four times. I told you I'm struggling to see those. There we go. Okay, awesome. So four times better. If you can't see clearly, it's due to how the light is shining here through, through the window in our office. So I can't really see those lines clearly. So then you just test it, okay? Again, you can't break this platform. So just test it. Okay, this is pretty straightforward. Easy enough, yes? Can I? Continue. Oh, I didn't even send you the link. I'm going to send you the link on puzzle two. Okay, now this looks a little bit different. Um, move to the hole and fill it with six shovelfuls of dirt using the full block. Okay, so here we are. We need to stand on top of that. And now we have this one that says full one. So if we fill one, we're going to fill only one, but we need to fill that one six times because there's a little number six there. Again, the light causes me to not be able to see the number six, but they told me here at the top it's six. So if we run this, you see it's counting down. The hole is gone. Beautiful. Okay. Are you comfortable with this this far? This is easy, right? Just drop a yes in the chat box if you're still following along. Okay. Awesome. So, we're right, oh, come on. Let's 
Let's continue. Okay, so now we have that same situation that we just had, except it's more piles of dirt. Move to the pile of dirt and tell me how many shovelfuls to remove. Use as few blocks as possible to solve this. Okay, so we're only limited to four blocks. I think you can tell me in the chat box what to do here. No ideas. Okay. Ah, cool. Cleo says move forward. Yes. Beautiful. We're going to move forward and then. Full times 10 in a repeat. Yes. Not full, I'm lying, remove. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yes, we need to pick up that. I'm going to show you what will happen if we fill that, just so that you can see. It just gives us an error. Should just give us an error. Oh, it doesn't even. Okay. But anyway, we can see there's a pile. We want to take it away. So we're going to remove times 10 into a repeat, obviously. And the move forward is not in the repeat because we don't want to place 10 remove blocks here. That's going to suck. Okay, I'm going to skip that little diamond because it's a video. I want to get to this number four. All right. So now we need to look at this. Look closely at the code below. What will happen after you click run? Nothing will happen. The farmer will never stop removing dirt. The farmer will remove dirt as long as there is a pile, then stop when the pile is gone. I don't know. So let's look at this. Here is your repeat. It says, while there is a pile, remove one. Okay, so let's just read that again. This is now again, this is a conditional, but in a repeat, which says, as long as there is a pile, this is what you do. So which option do you think here is going to fit this? Okay, I've got two different answers in already. My choice is also C. Let's see if we are right or not. Okay. So that worked. Right. Now, now let us get onto this platform and actually talk about that. Right. So you see now with this one, we don't know how much dirt there is. So we can't use a repeat like this and say, okay, re remove five times. Let's do this and run it and you'll see. There's only one. So if we remove that, oh no, there's 10. Okay, something's not right. The link, yes, sorry. Okay, so you see when we do this, now we change it to 10, come on. Because we just saw there was there were 10, now we do this, we get there, we see, okay, it's going to work this time because there's 10, so we're lucky. But next time there might not be 10. Okay, this one keeps going to 10. But the way to counteract this is to say, okay, isn't there a way that we can tell this little harvester farmer to only dig 
as long as there is a pile. And as soon as the pile is there, she needs to stop. And we can. This is this. That's what that does. This repeats is while there is a pile. So you can see there are a few things you can change here as well. So you can use it differently. But what this is basically saying is check for a pile. If there is a pile, do this. It's a repeat. So it's automatically going to come back and check for a pile again while the pile is there, remove. So you remember with the if statement, this is the same, but this one will automatically repeat. If you had just a normal if statement, it would have done it only once. So if you said, if there is a pile, remove one, it's going to do that one time and then continue on with the code. If you want that to repeat, you need to take that entire if statement and put it into repeat by numbers, and then you need to set that to a few times, okay? So it sort of defeats the purpose of having the ability to check. This one, on the other hand, it is a repeat already. That's why it's in this purple, pinkish type block. All our repeats are in purple, pinkish type blocks. It's just a conditional repeat. Instead of only repeating a set number of times, it's going to repeat while a certain condition is true. And then as soon as that is false, it'll stop repeating. So we can run this and you'll see that in action. Okay. There we go. You can also use this for something like this. Ah, this is a beautiful example. And it's going to be a beautiful homework example. So you can have some fun with this, okay? Yeah, this is a good one to practice on. Go and have some fun with this, share it to me on my email. Just when you send me an email, just type, hi, this is Quasi Grade 9, and then you send it, okay? So that I know I've obviously now typed this in the, in the chat. So when I'm pre preparing or checking these things, I don't have the time to read through the entire chat, but I can quickly check the last line and just see, okay, cool. There it is. So awesome. Yes, this is going to be a fun one. Now you need to pay attention here. There's only one of these repeats and there's a reason for that. Okay, so, so check if you can find that reason. Then I need to tell you as well, I think I'll just verify. So don't quote me on this, but on the 27th, there will be informal assessments, right? We're going to continue with lessons next week the way we have. I've already created the assessments, okay? I'm not going to give it to you. It's going to be available on the website. And once I have those links, I'll link to it on the YouTube videos as well. So we can then, uh, you can just then go download those, those assessments. The links to the puzzles will be on that assessment. So you can just go to each puzzle, do it, screenshot it for yourself and keep it somewhere. And then when I come the day after the 27th or on the 27th, I'm not sure how they're going to do that yet. Then I'll just review those puzzles for that assessment with you. Okay. There are about five puzzles in there out of work that we've done already. So it's not going to count towards anything. It's something that you need to do to make sure that you are actually learning. You're also going to self assess. So I'm going to show you the results and the answers and discuss it with you, and you are going to assess yourself to see what level are you on. The puzzles that I gave you are lang easy, so you really need to be able to, to have the ability to do them by this time, okay? If you don't, and you feel, wow, this is, this is stressing me out, send me an email so that we can set something up, okay? I want you guys to have the ability to code, not just to have the ability to come here and copy what I do, okay? So that's an open invite from me to you after next week stuff happening. So we've obviously gone. Huh. Oh yeah, we, we already passed this. Conditionals in B5. To, I don't know what's happening. This thing of mine. We're supposed to have while loops in a farmer, but we're already on puzzle seven for while loops in a farmer. So obviously scratch this entire thing here. Monday will continue, puzzle 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 to 13, okay.
this is obviously a typing mistake from me and that's my mistake because this just yesterday when I created all of this, this had a, uh, another name. So I just came in this morning quickly to update my PowerPoints and I copied and pasted the wrong thing in here. Okay, let me just quickly. Thank you for being here. Okay. And have a great weekend. Stay safe. All of those types of things, you know. And then yeah, just play on this puzzle number seven. It's it's fun, but you need to you need to pay attention. Okay. And if you send me an email, please do. I love to see the work that you're doing. And if you have any questions, you can send it there. But just drop your name and what grade you're in. Okay, so that I know what to reference to. And then these are the social media platforms you can find us on. That's basically it, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.